I recently read 15 modern fantasy books and these are the 5 you should add to your to be read list. First up, we have Babel by RF Kuang. Now, I never did a full dedicated review for this book, so here's my chance to finally give you a proper recommendation. This book has been everywhere and has like 8 different special editions and has received so much praise. Everyone seems to love this book and I'm also one of them. However, this is very different from your typical high fantasy story. Babel is a historical fantasy that takes place in Oxford during the 1800s and has a very strong dark academia vibes. We basically follow this young orphan named Robin Swift who is brought from China to London to train to become a translator for Oxford. We then basically follow Robin's journey from China to England and how he learns more about languages, translation and more importantly the dark history behind the institution called Babel. There are a number of reasons why this book has been praised so much. Firstly, you can clearly see that Kuang did a lot of research when writing this book. Everything feels like it has been researched which I really appreciate. Secondly, the characters are brilliant and compelling and the writing is beautiful. You can't help but get lost in this book. Third and foremost, what I was left with after having finished this book was the themes. Kuang brilliantly explores the themes of identity, colonialism, morality, different cultures, hierarchies, imperialism, languages, and of course, translation. Now, I've never seen a fiction book explore all of these themes, and this book will make you think deeply, which I really love. Now, Babel is a slow-paced, character-driven, historical fantasy novel. So, if you want to explore something more epic, then my next recommendation will be for you. The Winery Flame Trilogy by Jen Williams. I recently finished this trilogy and I loved it. It is definitely very underrated. Now, the Winery Flame trilogy is a modern fantasy in every sense. Now, let me explain. For example, firstly, the pacing in this book is absolutely ruthless and there's barely any exposition or descriptions in this book. Williams does not enjoy writing books that has long travel sequences where we hear about characters traveling from one place to the other. No. Instead, you'll often have scenes where a character states, we need to travel five hours that way, for example. And then the book will say, when they arrived, they saw this or that. So there's very little time spent on descriptions or traveling and stuff like that. But that is not why I love this series so much. The Winter Flame trilogy is one of the most unique series I have ever read period. We're basically set in this very weird world where you have humans and then you have this other race called Imborans. Now, these Oborans have always received their life energy from this big tree, but this tree is now dying, so the race is also slowly dying, leading to many issues, obviously. But these Oborans can get life energy from drinking human blood. Yes, I told you, it's weird, but it gets weirder. But by drinking human blood, these Iborans will become ill with an illness called the Crimson Flux, which is also making this race die. In addition to this, you have this alien race called the Juralia that every so often comes back and tries to destroy everything on the planet. Now this has happened 8 times before and now they're waiting on the ninth attack to happen. Then you also have witches that ride on giant bats in this book, you have parasite spirits that are dangerous, and then you have these massive UFOs scattered across the country. <laughs> now, I told you it's weird, but it is so good. The world building is so unique and refreshing. Also, the characters are brilliant, and this series has some of the best animal companions I have ever come across in fantasy. Now, if you want something weird, modern, and enjoyable, pick up the Winery Flame trilogy. Third recommendation, and this is a 17 year old book that I would definitely still consider a modern book, and that is Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. Okay, we all know who Sanderson is, and people usually say that this is his weakest novel since it was his first published book. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's actually not bad. It is actually pretty good in my opinion. Now, I have done a full review for this novel on this channel, so I won't get into too much detail, but I was really surprised by how much I enjoyed this book. For example, firstly, this is a standalone fantasy novel, which is not something you often get in the fantasy genre. This story basically centers around this city called Elantris, that used to be this incredibly beautiful and radiant city that was filled with magic and these demigods. However, suddenly the magic has failed in the city, and the city has become powerless and full of these leper-like people. Now, outside of the city of Elantris, we have different kingdoms making a move for power, and a re religion is a big theme in this book. 
Now, as a Christian, I really enjoyed how Sanderson explores different aspects of being religious. In this book, you have people who are genuine in their faith, but they are actually misled. And then you also have people that don't believe in religion at all. Then you also have people that genuinely believe, but they misuse their position as religious figures to make like power moves. Then you have politicians that try to act religious to win favor with certain groups. Now it is especially the exploration of religion that made the book stand out for me. So if you enjoy fantasy books that have lots of politics, complex characters and a unique setting and discusses religion in an interesting way, then I would definitely recommend picking up Elantris. That being said, this is definitely not Sanderson's best work to date, but it is definitely worth reading in my opinion. The fourth recommendation is another standalone novel. Yes, I am really treating you guys today. And that is The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie. Now, I would actually recommend reading the previous books in this universe first, if you want to get the full experience uh, reading this book. I suppose you could pick up this book without having read the first law trilogy and best so called, but it would not be as an enjoyable reading experience. So please just read the first four books first before picking up this one. And you will also definitely have a great time with those books. But The Heroes is probably the biggest surprise of 2022 for me. I expected to read this book and not enjoy it at all actually, because everyone basically told me that this story is just a major battle. Now usually battle scenes is my least favorite part of fantasy, so I was really worried. But to my surprise, this has actually become one of my favorite books of the year. Yes, this book centers around a huge war conflict and battle scenes do take up a chunk of this book, but this story is actually not that much about the fighting itself. It is actually much more about the people going to war, the people making the big decisions, and the politicians and kings that have the last say in conflicts like this. This book is also very much about the absurdity of glorifying war and how the heroes we tend to celebrate are usually just as flawed and sometimes even more flawed than we are. Now the title of this book is very ironic because all the heroes in this book are so, so flawed and messed up. Now, this is a brilliant book exploring human nature, the absurdity of war, morality and role models. I mean, truly no one writes like Joe Abercrombie. Abercrombie's ability to write awful characters and make the reader to feel for them is incredible. Also, it just feels like Abercrombie understands human nature ever so well. Now these books are quite grim and dark, so they will definitely not be for everyone. But if you enjoy witty, fun and dark books that are character driven, then The Heroes and The First Law Universe is for you. Now the last recommendation is The First Binding by R.R. Verdi. Now this book came out a couple of months ago and it is a chalky book. The First Binding is the first book in the Tales of Tremaine series and basically follows this storyteller called Ari as he tells his epic story. Now a lot of readers have compared this book to The Name of the Wind and some even called this book the Asian inspired name of the wind. Because you have this legendary storyteller that tells his story and then throughout this book you have stories within stories. Now this is a slow paced character driven story with beautiful writing and lots of poetry. The reason why I love this book so much was because of the prose. The prose just blew me away and helped me become so immersed in the story. Yes, this is a very slow paced story but I didn't really mind that. I just loved being in this world. Now. That being said, some readers have stated that they are bothered by how similar this book is to The Name of the Wind, and I actually haven't read The Name of the Wind. I know, the shame, right? So I actually can't really state whether I think this is a fair criticism, but that is just something worth keeping in mind before going into this book. So those are five recommendations from some of my recent reads. Do you have any recommendations for me? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and a special thanks for my Patreons who support what I do here. I really appreciate it. <laughs>